Oh, thank you so much. Wow. The ideal of Mother's Day is that uh, we get from our mothers, or whoever it is that's mothering us, that all is well with our soul, isn't it? What a, what a gorgeous song and story. I have a question as we begin today, and I want to ask if you would please um, think about this before you raise your hand, but I want you to raise your hand to the best of your ability, right, left, doesn't matter, you can stand up, whatever you want to do, but I want to ask you this question, think about it. Please raise your hand if you had or have a birth mother. <laughs> Everybody look around. Everybody got their hand up. No walk-ins in this place. Yes. It's one of the things that we all have in common. When you see someone and they present as an enemy in any way, shape, or form, you can remember this precious spirit, this precious brother or sister has, as I have, a mother. And we are brave. And we are bruised. And this is me. I'm a mom. I am brave. I am bruised. And this is me. Right? You are who you are. And you are a magnificent divine child of God. And that's just the way it is. Because your creation story is, in the beginning, there was your mother. And she gave birth to you. Just like that. It's so amazing. Birth is an amazing process. It's a letting go, the deepest and <laughs> widest letting go, <laughs> letting go that I've ever done, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but it really calls you to a place of going, OK, I surrender completely. I'm giving my life so that there can be new life. And that's what you and I are called to do every single day of our lives. It has nothing to do with gender. It has to do with being the nurturing nature that you are. I have a nurturing nature. Say that after me, if you will, please. I have a nurturing nature. Say it again. I have a nurturing nature. Yeah, you were born that way. We call it Christ within, your hope of glory. Why? Because when you and I are willing to reach in and allow the Christ to be the light, when we feel a little, a little less than bright, then there is a shininess that overcomes all sense of darkness. It's been said that one ounce, how much is an ounce? Like the, an, an ounce? A sixteenth of a pound, like an ounce. It's been said that one ounce of mother is worth a pound of clergy. It is not an exact measurement. I haven't seen any statistics on that. However, what that really means, doesn't it? it what it means is, to me anyway, is that the loving essence that is within you is what speaks through you. That is what guides you, what instructs you. you don't, it's not about a Sunday message and you go home and that's it for the week and then you come back the next Sunday. It's that you allow that essence of mothering, nurturing energy to move through you in magnificent ways, in ways that you cannot even know that you are touching another person's life. So today we're talking, as the Daily Word was referring, we're talking about mothering essence. We're talking about mothering qualities that we have. And I want you to notice, I did not say smothering qualities, <laughs> right? Because some of us have mothers, you know, it's loaded. I get that. I have that. With my mother left the planet years and years ago, and she's doing great. She's doing great. Thank you very much. I feel her presence all the time. Some of us have mothers on the earth plane. Some of us have mothers that have already left the earth plane. Mother's Day, though, can bring up a sense of um, anticipation, a sense of expectation, a sense of uh, need to and, um, and need from. And so it can be a difficult thing for our children to deal with. I know as a child I never felt like I could do uh, enough unless I made French toast for my mother and put fresh blueberries on it that I knew it was, it was, it was enough because that's exactly what she wanted. But you know, that's not a tradition that's carried through these days as much. My children came to me a couple years ago, and I have children that are cultural creatives. I have children in the theater. They're both in New York City. They're both in the arts. They both dance. They both sing. They are just amazing beings of light. And they teach me, as our children do, and you did with your mothers as well, 
all the time. Now, they came to me a couple years ago and they said, Mom, you know, uh, this Mother's Day thing, we got to talk about it. Because we're really busy and we don't necessarily buy the card that far in advance and send it to you so you receive it that day. And we know that you're sitting there going, where's the card? You know, we don't necessarily order a, a bouquet of flowers and get it to you on that day. And we know you're probably hoping that we'll send you the flowers. But you know what? We've been to the Hallmark stores. We've read the cards. And there is no one who writes those cards who has any idea how precious you have been to us. Who can express with their words what we feel in our hearts. And that's the truth of how we are toward our own mothers. And our children are that way toward us. And so, Mom, we're going to ask for you, please, give us a break on Mother's Day. If things get there on Mother's Day, they do. Great. Yay. Thank you, God. If they don't, yay. Thank you, God. Because guess what? We love you all the time. Every day is Mother's Day. Why? Because we have the mothering, fathering presence of God within us, within you. You may go. <laughs> yes, you. Turn to your neighbor and go, mothering, father, present. No, don't say that. that that's way too complicated. Say, uh, you have a nurturing nature, and I see it. Say that to your neighbor. You have a nurturing nature, and I see it. You have a nurturing nature, and I see it. Oh, thank you, God. Okay. This is where the minister reels them back in. Isn't it, isn't it fun when you get to talk with each other and see each other on a Sunday? In the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 10, it says, For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness, bless you, shall not depart from you. I have a joke. It's really, really corny. Do you want to hear it? Okay. It's a Mother's Day joke. I, I saw some really great Mother's Day jokes when I looked. And so there's a close-up of a, a cartoon, and it kind of looks like, I'm not sure who actually made the cartoon, but it's a close-up of a cartoon. And in the foreground, you see this young man, very slight young man, sitting at a table just peacefully doing something in front of him. And then in the background, you see his mother, who is at the door, and she's opened the door. Clearly, there was a knock on the door. She opened the door, and all we see are these enormous legs. We can really just see the calves and these huge shoes and one of the shoes is going and his mother says David Mrs. Goliath would like to have a word with you <laughs> yeah our mothers called us out but what they did for us and what they have always done and will always do for us is that they die to a certain way of living in order to give birth to us. That metaphysical cord that we call the umbilical cord is cut. It needs to be cut. It needs to be severed at birth so that we can stand on our own and be who we are and show up as God's beloved child to be a representative of the divine. There's a question for us, and that Wayne uh, Muller asked this question. How shall I live knowing I will die? How shall I live knowing that this is a very fragile, finite time on the earth plane, which is just a, a portion, a tiny portion of this immense eternal life that you and I came to live into? and to move from this place to that with grace and with glory and to do so by nurturing each other and being one another's mother. How shall I live? Because as you and I lean into and massage this question of how shall I live, knowing that I will die, knowing that this is a temporary place and I came here, this too shall pass, how I live and that question it just falls away and opens up a spaciousness in us where Little things that we get stuck in, like she did this, and I did that, and she didn't do that, and we didn't do this, and all that. Well, it just falls away. It just falls away, and what is left is this essence of what truly is. The God, the presence, the love that is you, and that is me. It's lifted up in that moment. 
It's a recognition that there's a perfect timing with everything. And in my family, I've had the opportunity to, to rest in the hammock of that knowing, if you will. And it's been very recent for me. And I, I want to share this with you because what came to me in the most recent months is one of my brothers mothering me. So I think it's really important for us to remember this isn't about gender. Though we celebrate today, we celebrate mothers because they are emblematic of how you and I can be. And they're not always that because they too are walking in human shoes and having human dilemmas. But the essence of who they are is the essence of who we are and they pass that on to us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mom. My brother, um, my, so I have all older brothers, three older brothers, and I'm the youngest and the only girl. And uh, my second, uh, the second sibling, well, this is not easy to explain. The youngest of the three older brothers, there we go, the second child uh, next to the last, is my brother Richard, or Dick. And um, Dick was diagnosed January 22nd with leukemia. The kind of acute leukemia, which is a, a, a um, cancer of the blood, the kind of leukemia that is the most difficult to treat. And he, um, he told uh, Dana Farber in Boston, the uh, Cancer Institute, that's just a wonderful one, this is the paradigm he chose to go through, uh, he told them that he had three siblings. And I was the only one who was able to be tested um, to see if I was a stem cell donor. And as it turns out, it's not about your blood type. I don't know if you know that, but I'm an A positive. I'm a positive girl. And my brother is an O negative, a, a donor, you know, a universal donor. And um, so it wasn't about our blood type. It was about our DNA. And of course, we came from the same parents, and yet the chromosomal markers may or may not match. But they did a, did a swab test with Dana Farber and found out that I'm an exact match for my brother. He is the brother, by the way, that I had the. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you can applaud that. It's, it's so amazing because he is the brother that I had the most difficulty with growing up. He is the one who is closest to me in age, and he had two older brothers who really, you know, had their way with him, and then he kind of brought that down to me, and he may help make me strong. <laughs> I got a few bruises to show for that. And, uh, and, you know, I love him with an unending love. So it turns out that I am a, I'm an exact STEM match for him. I, I'm like every one of the hundred chromosomal markers I matched. And I passed my physical, thank God, a half day physical at Dana Farber. And uh, so I was all set up to, and well, in, when I was in Spain walking the Camino a few weeks ago, I stopped drinking wine, Rioja, and in the Rioja district. I did that for my brother. <laughs> and I stopped having caffeine. I did that for my brother. I did. And, you know, and I started, actually had, um, a, I was supposed to take Claritin. Now this is interesting, Claritin. You guys have heard of that, decongestant, right? So they don't sell Claritin in Spain. So I went to the pharmacy in this little village and I, because I was supposed to start taking it the next day. Claritin, it turns out, um, it, it de-emphasizes or it eases the pain in your bones when you're a stem cell donor, when they take your stem cells, because you're injected for five days to grow them, and then they, they eight hours you lie there, and, and it's, they're taken through your blood. So I'm supposed to take Claritin, and I, and I can't went to the pharmacy. We don't sell Claritin. Oh, okay. And in my Spanglish and her Spanish, we, she brought out a book, and we figured out that they have the main ingredient is loratadina. And they had a 10 milligram loratadina, and I said, oh great, I'll buy two boxes of that, because I have to start tomorrow, so I can be a stem cell donor. And that day, that, that day when I finished hiking, it was 18 miles that day, when I took my trousers off, my legs were bright red with what's called burn rash, a stress rash that can happen, or it's a heat rash, hives. And uh, so <laughs> I was walking with my partner, and David said, well, let's just Google what you're supposed to do for hives. And guess what you're supposed to do for hives? Take Claritin. <laughs> Thank you, God. Amazing. Three days, hives gone. But I found out the next morning my brother's leukemia had returned. He was finished with traditional chemotherapy. He had taken it twice. 
So Dana Farber, I was I went there right after Spain. I was there for 12 days with my brother, helped care for him, drive him to Boston with his beloved wife, and Dana Farber's accepted him. And right now, on Monday, he started his 20 his. 28-day treatment. It will be the last chemotherapy that he receives uh, because he can do just that. It's a trial drug. And if he decides to stay on the planet, they'll be calling me up and I'll be going into Boston and I'll be like, take anything I have. I know he probably won't want my girl parts. He'll just want the stem cells. Like, yes! Do you know what? He showed me in his way of being that he said, that he's really determined. He's faith-filled. He knows that God is the God of all possibilities. He knows that God has plans for him, plans to give him a future. And that may be that he leaves the planet, and it may be that he stays, but he wants to be here. And so with great intention, he and his wife bought two new beds. They bought two new recliners in front of their big screen TV, and they bought a turntable. He bought a turntable because for 17 years, he has not heard his music. 17 years, it's been in a box in the storage room room and guess who found the records? <laughs> so I found the records and he, I, he said, well, Diane, would you clean them all because they'd mildewed. So I spent five hours cleaning all his records. They were stacked up that high with just sleeves that were there. We had to throw the covers away. And he went to his record player, opened it up, and he took out the top record, which was Pachelbel's Canon in D. I think one of his favorites. It's certainly a favorite that's played at weddings all the time. And he put that record on and set the needle and then silently motioned to his wife. And this is what I recorded through my tears behind the mask that I was wearing. is wearing a mask so as not to expose him and see him say thank you the only prayer we need ever say thank you thank you thank you <laughs> Yes, we had the same mother. And yes, you have a mother. But today is the day the Lord has made. And it's Mother's Day. Share with others, if you will, that which you need in your life. Let them know who you are and how much you cherish them. Mother Teresa said it this way, If I am hungry, give me someone to feed. When I am thirsty, give me someone who needs a drink. When I'm cold, give me someone to keep warm. And when I grieve, give me someone to console. <sighs> May the mothering God who adores you just the way you are hold you in the soft palms of her hands and lift you up this Mother's Day, as we celebrate life together, this day proclaimed. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs>